know okay. where I went. No, I don't know where you went. It's not my business where you went. You get to say something or not. Um, but we'll talk about it afterwards, if, as long as you're feeling safe. Um, sometimes when we do the bubble work, some really strong, good emotions come up. And that's what I'm hearing from you happen. Um, so what, what we're going to do now is we're going to integrate them in a way that they can be used. Um, sometimes people don't want to come back from where they were. And it was in the coming back that you got emotional because you didn't want to come back. Um, normally we wouldn't talk through this in between, but I just wanted to take a little break to explain what we were seeing. So we're going to do a play, uh, go into a place now. You like going to the beach? Okay. Okay, we're going to go to the beach. Now, some people don't like to go to the beach, and if that's the case, take that seriously and change the scenario. Visualize your hand and be aware of the feeling in your hand. And your fingertips feel warm and tingly. Close your eyes. Anytime you pay attention to any part of your body, the blood flow increases and it's very healing. If you can't feel the heartbeat in your fingertips, imagine you can feel the, finger, the heartbeat in your fingertips. And when you have it, raise your finger. Let's focus on bringing that heartbeat to your fingertips. Okay. Now count evenly with your fingertips. Now count slower count slower and count slower. Now we're going to the beach. It's a bright, warm, sunny day. And we're flying over the city and the lakes and the streams. You feel a great freedom as you fly through the air. You look down at the mountains and the streams and the lakes and you see the colors of the trees and the water. And now we're standing on your favorite beach. Go ahead and relax in your barefoot a very warm sunny day and you feel the warmth of the sand on your feet. You hear the cry of the seagulls as they fly by and you feel the warm ocean breeze blow across your forehead and you smell the salty air. You take your right foot and stick it in the sand and as you do the sand gets cooler and cooler. As you lift your foot out you can feel the sand running between your toes. Now you're running down to the water's edge and as you do so you hear the sand squeaking under your feet. Now you now you're standing on wet sand and can feel the coolness of the sand. You feel the slight rush and you hear the ocean as a wave comes in for it's a very calm day. You can feel the coolness of the water as it washes over your feet. As it comes in it washes the sand out from underneath the front of your feet and as it goes out it washes the sand out from underneath the back of your feet. It feels like you're sinking right down into the sand. You look out into the ocean and see a great calmness in the ocean. The ocean has a great calmness and it's going to share this calmness with you. This calmness soaks into the very depth of your soul. Under this calmness is a great power. The ocean is going to share this power with you. This is the power of the universe. You can feel this power flood through your whole body. And this is going to give you the power to do the work that you need to do today look up in the sky. You see a big white fluffy cloud and the cloud reminds you of cotton candy you got when you were a child. You reach up and take a pinch of the cloud and you put it in your mouth. You can taste the sweetness of the candy and the thrill of going to the circus or the carnival or wherever you were. It goes through your whole body. Now you're running down the beach splashing in the water and the joy of living runs through your whole body. As you run, you splash a little salt water on your lips. You taste the saltiness of the ocean, and it tastes good. You stop and look up on the beach, and there's some friends who love you there very much, sitting around the campfire. Some are friends, and some are family. They wave for you to come up and sit at the, fam at the fire. And you may not recognize them by face, but you recognize them by the feel of who they are. And you can feel the warmth in the fire. And the warmth is all of the love that these people and your ancestors and your descendants and your family all have for you. The people that love you now and in the past and in the future. And this love you have for them in the warmth of the fire 
you put it in the fire and the fire gets warmer. So you have a strong sense of belonging, love, and warmth. You look down at the beach and you see a child playing there. The child looks very familiar to you. You get up and walk toward the child. As you get closer, you see that the child is you. You get down on your knees and give the child a hug. You take the child by the hand and lead, lead him back to the campfire. <coughs> you sit down with the child <coughs> and all of the love that is in the fire gets much warmer. Now you tell the child that is yourself that you're sorry for all of the pain and suffering that you caused yourself in your lives and in your life and that you did the very best you could with the life knowledge that you had at the time. Now you and the child become one again and you have a new sense of wholeness. Now you're sitting back in the chair you're in right now. I'm pressing the notch here so that where the good feelings are anchored. Feel these good feelings move up your arm and into your heartbeat, into your heart. Feel the heartbeat in your chest, the way you feel the warmth of my arm. This warmth is now going up your arm and into your heart, and it is the love of a friend. Remember this warmth, and you will remember that you have, you have people who love you. You have a friend who loves you, and you have others who love you. This warmth spreads throughout your whole body. Your higher power is in your heartbeat, in your heart. And you can feel all of the love that your higher power has for you, whatever you choose to identify as your higher power. Now your higher power, who we'll call God, is now making a big bubble of love. And God is going into that bubble. And then you go into the bubble, and you sit with God, your higher power. You can feel all of the warmth of God's love for you all around inside this bubble. You feel very safe and secure, and all you feel is the love that is in this bubble. No pain can ever get into this bubble. Your higher power will not let it in. Anytime you want these feelings, you go into your bubble with your higher power, you feel the heartbeat in your chest or your fingertips, and you visualize yourself sitting with your higher power in the bubble. And this is a gift for you for the rest of your life. I'm going to count to three. And then I want you to come back, and now we have the tools to do the bubble work. One, two, three. Come back when you're ready. Wow. Okay, we're going to go and do another one. Um, I'd like you to close your eyes. We're going to strengthen your bubble before we get into the bubble work. Close your eyes again. And this time I'd like you to go into your bubble. Press your acupressure point right here with your left hand so that you feel that, that bubble forming with all of those good feelings that you put into that bubble. Okay, now come on, put your hands back. Now that, are you in your bubble? Okay. Get into your bubble and take those good feelings into your heart and then go down into the basement of your heart. And there you will find, going down the stairs, counting one, two, three, four, five. And as you look around, you see the basement is filled with things on the ground. There's piles of dirty clothes, and there's sparkling, beautiful, gorgeous jewels all mixed in. The air is thick. It's a little grimy all around. And at your feet, you see a basket appear. And that's a golden basket. You pick up that basket, you put it over your arm. And you walk around, and you decide you're going to pick up all of the dirty clothes. And you pick up one piece and see how small it is. And you smell it, you feel the weight, you see the grime put it in your basket. And you go around the room and you pick up all the dirty clothes and they're either in a pile in the middle getting a bigger and bigger pile or you grab them from there or you grab them from the floor as you're heading over to the pile that's forming of all of these clothes. And the clothes get bigger and bigger as you pull them out and put them into your basket. And finally there's only one piece of clothing left. A pair of huge coveralls. 
feel it, you smell it, and you put one leg in, then you put another leg in, then you put one arm in, you put the other arm in, and you feel the weight, and you smell the smell, and you see the grind, and you feel it is heavy. And suddenly you realize you're holding on to your greatest fear, and now you're wearing it. It doesn't have to be named. You take it off. Take one arm out, take the other arm out. Take one leg out, take the other leg out. You roll it up into a ball, and you put it into the golden basket, which isn't heavy. The weight disappears. And as you look around, you see that there are no dirty clothes on the ground anymore. And the air feels lighter already. And you hear it knock and realize there's a back door to your basement of the heart that you hadn't seen. And so you go to the door and you open the door. And there is your higher power, your God, in any form that you choose. And you're silently communicating and your higher power reaches out his arms and asks for the basket silently. Takes the basket, you hand the basket over and the basket is pulled in and consumed in the fire of his love in his heart or her heart, their heart, its heart. And then the two of you, arm in arm, walk into the basement and you both look around and your eyes, your eyesight becomes like laser beams, cleaning off the grime on the walls, cleaning off, cleaning off the dirt in the air. And you look and you see there's another basket at your feet. This time it's a silver basket. You pick up the basket, and you put it over your arm, and you walk around together, picking up this jewel or that jewel, whatever jewel you want in the time. Some jewels you choose to leave there for another time. You pick the jewels up that speak to you at the moment and put them in the basket. You pull the basket close to your own heart, and you realize these are the treasures that have been given to you that you have forgotten in the basement of your heart. And these are gifts to strengthen you, give you resiliency, give you joy and love and worth and belonging and freedom. And you walk up the stairs together, hand in hand, and counting as you go, one, two, three, four, five. And you walk out and find there is a balcony in the basement of your heart, and you're looking out and you can see forever the trees, the fields, the waters, and the sun is shining in the sky. And, the, and you can see in the distance that there must be people far, far away. And those people are waiting for you. And you can hear them singing. You can hear them waiting. And you look at the sun, and the sun starts to spin. And as it spins, it starts to fill the sky with all these little glittering pieces from the sky, filling it with yellow yellow glitters of light. And the glitters fall down to the earth, and as they fall down, covering everything, they touch your skin, and you feel that they are love. And you collect all of that love here. through the top of your head. It comes in and goes through all of your body, and it fills through your finger fingers and your toes, it comes out and it fills the bubble that you're in. And you can feel all of that love swirling around you, filling up your bubble, making it strong. And any time that you want, you can push on your acupressure point and go into your bubble. Living in the bubble is our goal. It's like living on a pink cloud but after you've done your work. And living in that bubble is where we are supposed to try to live no matter what. Nothing can get in that bubble. And we're able to do what we need to do and not be thrown off balance. Keep feeling that love and come back when you want to. Great. All right, let's go to another place now. Okay, come back. <coughs> state, take a drink of water, and then we'll go back to the next one.
talk about all of this later. We don't need to talk now. Okay, would you like to work on eliminating resentments? Or do you want to keep your resentments? Sometimes people want to keep them. They're a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> resentments are fun. <laughs> so, would you like to work on a resentment? Okay. Okay, find one that's not necessarily a big lifelong resentment. That we could work on and, and work on pieces of it another time, or you can. Find a resentment that's fairly fresh not connected to others, not hooked into something really deep, and one that you're willing to let go of. Let me know when you have it. Close your eyes. How do you think? No. Okay? All right. Visualize that person or place, and when you have the feeling, let me know by raising your finger. Visualize that resentment, that situation, or that person, and sit in that feeling of resentment. Now I'm going to, okay, so you felt the resentment. I'm going to anchor that resentment right here on this knuckle. Now I'd like you to break state, open your eyes, come back and look at me. This is going to go really quick. Thank you. Now close your eyes. Now go back. Now this time I'd like you to touch your acupressure point, touch your little button here with your right with your left hand on your right hand and climb into your bubble. Put your hands back when you're in your bubble. Really access all those good feelings. Really sit in those good feelings. Let them grow as much as they want. Okay. Now I'd like you to feel a heartbeat in your fingertips. Okay. Can you feel the heartbeat in your fingertips? Raise your finger if you can. Okay. Now I'd like you to bring that heartbeat right here to the knuckle. And when you can feel a heartbeat and the good feelings on that knuckle, you've got your finger up. I guess you can feel it already. This spot will feel warm and tingly when the good feelings get there. Okay. Now, recall whatever feelings you had in the situation while you're in the bubble. And really sit and let that feeling of resentment grow as much as it wants to. Can you feel the resentment while you're in the bubble? Answer me yes or no. Okay, break state, come back and look at me. This works for any negative emotion at any time. And often it will take two or three times to go through it. And if somebody's really willing and it's not hooked in real deep, it can happen as quickly as that one time. Can you feel that resentment? It was gone. While you're still talking. That's pretty fast. Because it was what you said it was so something small. It wasn't yeah. intense. Just something I kind of forgot about. It. Just still there. Oh. And, and this is how we get into the habit of using our body to address and change our emotions. And so when we get in the habit of doing this on the small ones, we can slowly work on pieces of the larger ones. And sometimes we can work on just the larger one in whole and it, and it will reduce significantly to the point where sometimes it actually disappears as easily as the little one did just now for you. I want to go to the beach. <laughs> yeah, we can go to the beach. Okay. So I'm going to go on to the next piece here. Um, the definition of the bubble work is, is to help us clean up the past. It's a tool. We're dealing primarily with relationships. Anyone who is on somebody's resentment list um, their immediate family, father, mother, brothers, sisters, ex-wives, ex-husbands, girlfriends, boyfriends, um, co-workers, ex-co-workers, all of, all of those folks can be viewed with love instead of fear. And using these tools of the bubble work, we can look at anything and not be negatively involved. So we, use, we prepare for the bubble work by doing the setup that we did. 
and then we also have some extinguishing tools. So I'm going to take you through some other ways of using the bubble work. We'll do it very quickly so that you have a taste of each of these and then you can go back and do these anytime that you want either with me, I can be your bubble work partner, or with anybody that you want or by yourself. Or you can throw it in the trash if it doesn't work for you. I'm not attached to it, okay? It's just a gift. Are you ready? Yep. Okay, so go into your bubble <coughs> and get good feelings going, pushing on your active pressure point. You want to do that? It might be better if you do it yourself. Okay, let me know when you're in the bubble. You've got your good feelings going. And the more you practice getting into your bubble by doing it, constantly during the day, the easier it gets to be in your bubble, to go there when things get difficult. Okay. Now visualize a person, place, or thing that you are allowing to disturb you. Something that you are bothered by. Raise your finger when you've got it. Okay. Now put a bubble around it. And perhaps with a straw, connect the two bubbles, yours and that bubble, and take love from your bubble and send it to that bubble. Fill that bubble of that person or thing or situation that you're allowing to disturb you. And fill that bubble with all the love that you have. And that you'll find that your bubble never empties and that bubble fills. Now when you're ready, disconnect and let that bubble drift off into space. Your bubble will never run out of good feelings because your higher power will not let it. It will always keep, your higher power will always keep your bubble full and you can give as much love away as you want and we will always have more love left. No pain can ever get into your bubble and I'm monitoring your heartbeat in the notch right here to, st to see where your emotional status is by your pulse. So come back, break state, clear that, that one off. Okay, close your eyes again. Find another situation, go find a past relation with a person as far back as you can remember in a troubled relationship. And any time that you were angry, resentful, fearful, shamed, or abandoned in the re relationship, Reach out of the bubble and pull yourself out of that situation. Pull yourself into your own bubble now with you. And you're picking up little pieces, little parts of yourself that you left behind. Each time we have a negative emotion, we lose a part of ourselves. We get stuck back there. And I have a more deeper way of doing this particular episode. I'll do that later. If a person has died, you can go to the funeral, make amends to that person. You can say, I'm sorry for any harm I may have caused you in, my, in your life. And you can put that person in a bubble, fill it with love, and send them off to heaven or the universe. If divorced or separated, you can make amends and put the person in a bubble, fill it with love, and send them on their separate way. For parents, after you've done the bubble work on the negative, visualize you and a parent in a bubble of love or in separate bubbles and then you can go off together and do the things you always wanted to do with that parent and you never got to do when you were a child. You can do the same in troubled relationships with your own children where you're both in bubbles and you go off to do the things that you never got to do as a parent with that child. You can see yourself standing with your parents and see who is the tallest. Visualize yourself being taller than they are and say Thank you very much for all the information and the misinformation you have given me in my life. I no longer have any need for it. And that's. And then when you let go of them, you can either thump them in the head or give them a big kiss and a hug, whichever you would like, and let them go. After doing all our relationships, sometimes in a couple of weeks or a couple of months later, we have some things that come up that were deeply suppressed and traumatic. And if it comes up, it comes up at a time that we are ready to deal with it. At these times, we call our bubble work partner. We can do work on these particular issues. Okay, open your eyes. Go back and look at me before we go on to the next one.
You doing okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, close your eyes again. Here we go. Step 11, a dark and rebellious nature in the 12 steps. It talks about we, shining, we shine our light on our dark sides. We can do this through visualization. We go into our bubble and we get these good feelings going. And we are an observer of our own spiritual continuum. We look at our dark and rebellious nature, the selfishness, our greed, lust for sex, money, material things, relationships, and the lengths that we go t to get them, all at the expense of others. We do this while we're in our bubble. We look at how we lie, steal, cheat, control, browbeat others to get what we want. We observe these things in us, and we know that this is part of our nature. It is okay for us to find that this is there, inside of us. But today, with some spiritual growth, we do not have to respond to these driving needs. We look at our spiritual selves where we are today and see how much we have grown in our recovery. We look towards our spiritual goals. We see ourselves further along the spiritual continuum. Come back when you want to. few more. Close your eyes. Okay. Climb into your bubble. Acceptance of our sexuality is one of the keystones to our recovery. Some of us have been involved in things we would rather not have been. It's not our sexu sexuality itself that causes harms. It's the obsession with sex that defeats our recovery. We can read about this in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous in page 69 to 71. So in your bubble, you can do bubble work on your sex life. What was okay, allow it to be okay. What you would rather have not have had happen, reach out outside of your bubble and pull yourself out of the situation. Now each of us has an ideal and a real self. The ideal self is a facade that we put out for others to see. The real self is how we really are. The difference between the two is a gauge of our emotional illness. In taking the steps in this work, we bring the ideal self and the real self into one being and face the world happy, joyous, and free. You can also do this bubble work on deep dark secrets where we get into the bubble, we run a scenario on all of our deep dark secrets that we don't have to share with anyone else. But we can still do our work in a way that we're safe and we're doing this in the protection of our higher power in our bubble. We can also look at the worst case thing that we could ever have possibly happen to us. We can stay in the bubble and be an observer of the visualization. It allows us to think of anything without being emotionally distraught, emotionally involved. In daily maintenance upon arising, we say, Good morning, God, and we say our morning prayers to get the good feelings going and feel the heartbeat, climb into our bubble, and visualize ourselves going through the day, doing the things that we'll do that day, having a good feeling all day long, in spite of everything. And, and normally at this spot, we would take 15 minutes in meditation, and this is a time where you can in the morning have a quiet mind, feeling the good feelings and being aware of your heartbeat. And if thoughts break in, allow them to pass, to pass and go back to your quiet mind. And in between, whenever you're disturbed during the day, we can stop and do the bubble work. Upon retiring, review the day, both good and bad. And this is in the 12th step. Um, it's step 10 in the big books of Alcoholics Anonymous, page 93 to 94. Whenever you're disturbed during the day, get the good feelings going, climb into your bubble, feel your heartbeat, and visualize yourself going through the disturbing times, having the good feelings. These keeps, this keeps things current, and your house is always clean. This is a practice in doing life right. Then we say good night, God, and go to sleep with a clean slate. Come back when you're ready. We have one.
only two more to do. We're almost done. No ice cream now. Yeah, we'll get some <laughs> ice cream afterwards. <laughs> He'll probably come while we're on this video <laughs> and hang out behind us. Okay. So now get into your bubble. <coughs> Lift your finger when you're in your bubble. Feel those good feelings. Be aware of your hand. Be aware of the feelings in your hand. And now you can feel your heartbeat in your fingertips. Raise your finger for a moment when you feel the heartbeat in your fingertips. If you can't feel your heartbeat in your fingertips, pretend you can. Now take the heartbeat from your fingertips and count evenly with the heartbeat. Feel the heartbeat right down to your tummy, right where your belly button is. Can you feel your heartbeat in, in your belly button? Enjoy all the feelings that are in your bubble and take them to that spot. Be aware of how this warmth spreads right through your whole body. Now go to that place between your conscious and subconscious, that place of knowing. This is where your higher power lives, the power that allows you to be more than you can be by yourself. If a thought breaks in, just observe the thought and go back to a quiet mind. Just be aware of the place of knowing and the warmth of the heartbeat in your tummy. As you observe the good feelings in your tummy, you feel your breath go in and out in a steady